By now, we have a good background of the Descents problem. In this part, we'll set up this PCB in ANSYS Electronics Desktop and solve for Descents. This board was created in HFSS 3D Layout. These are the data lines. Each of these clock signals drives a chip. We'll run two clock speeds and evaluate Descents for the Wi-Fi system. You can access this board from the Examples folder here. This project has a pre-solved version of this board in HFSS 3D layout. I've defined lumped ports to excite the transmission lines and pins. Zoom in on any of these ports for a close-up view. We're interested in a wide range of frequencies to capture the different clock speeds and data spectra. I've defined an interpolating sweep from 0 to 3 GHz with a step size of 10 MHz. Remember our minimum requirements? I'll show you an efficient technique to characterize the aggressors, compute the coupling, and define the receivers. We'll assign these in parallel. In Electronics Desktop, insert an EMIT design. In the Project Tree, drag and drop the HFSS 3D layout design onto the EMIT design. This exposes six unassigned ports, as expected, referencing their names to the excitations in the 3D layout design. Since I'm using an unsolved version of this board, I'll start the simulation of this design in HFSS. You can skip this step since the HFSS designs in the Examples folder are pre-solved. While this is running in the background, let's assign the aggressors an EMIT. To set up the Wi-Fi radio, right-click the unassigned antenna port, assign new, and select System. This connects the antenna to the Wi-Fi radio. Since we added an RF system, this node is populated. Double-click this instance. Select the radio and click this button to open the configuration window. This radio follows the IEEE 802.11.2012 standard that supports multiple technologies and channels. We'll use high rate direct sequence spread spectrum. Since we want to see the effect of the digital systems on the Wi Fi receiver, enable the receive bands. Now let's assign the emitters. Let's specify the clocks first. Double-click the emitter instance to open its configuration window. Leave the default options in the modulation panel as is. Our waveform will be a periodic clock. We'll run two clock speeds, a slow clock and a fast clock. Specify the options under channel frequencies as shown. The slow clock speed is representative of data rates consistent with existing standards, while the fast clock may represent a technology under development. To set up the Wi-Fi clock, copy the existing emitter and paste it. Rename this emitter to match the correct port name. Observe that the Wi-Fi clock has the same settings as the controller clock. Right-click this port and assign existing emitter. The only option we have here is the Wi-Fi clock. Now the data lines. Assign a new emitter for the Wi-Fi controller data line. In the configuration window of this emitter, set the waveform to PRBS and the bit period to 0.42 nanoseconds. This is the inverse of 2400 megabits per second. Give this a meaningful name. Duplicate this node and rename it. Change the bit period to 0.17 nanoseconds. For the external data lines, copy this emitter and paste two instances. Rename the emitters accordingly. We'll run the same data rates. Assign the first data line as an existing emitter. Select data 1. Similarly, assign data 2 as an existing emitter. 
Now that the simulation of the board in HFSS 3D layout is complete, all the reports are updated, the return loss of the data and clock ports over the wide range of frequencies that we specified indicates good performance of the traces. We can also see the antenna is resonating in the Wi-Fi band. This report provides insertion loss, otherwise known as coupling. This represents the unintended coupling between the aggressors and the Wi-Fi antenna. Since I want to synchronize the coupling data between HFSS 3D layout and EMIT, I'll right-click the design and update dynamic link. If you are operating from the pre-solved design included in the examples, you can skip this step. When you link a pre-solved design to EMIT, the coupling data is automatically synchronized so you do not have to update the dynamic link. Save the project. In the next part, we'll analyze this design in EMIT.